I have zero real photography experience. I don't own a fancy DSLR or expensive lenses, or one of those old school film cameras like my hipster buddies do, but I do own this. I wanna help you take cool pictures of your car with your phone, and my buddies Larry Chen and John Cerrone wanna help too, so let's do it. This is my car, and this picture is the best picture I've taken to date of said car. This terribly composed, super amateur picture will all be forgotten by the end of this episode. For those of you watching who aren't huge social media buffs, don't go anywhere. Learning how to take a nice looking picture will only help you if you go to sell your car. It's easier to sell your car if the pictures make you want whatever you're looking at. Think about restaurant food pictures. Would you want to eat this or this? Better pictures equals better business. Better business equals better pizza, Papa Nolan. Our beautiful and lovely model for today's shoot is Sarah's Smurf Blue Miata. We decided to bring Sarah's Miata to a scenic, coastal suburban neighborhood cul-de-sac. We've got our phone, we've got the location, let's talk about light. Your best bet is to use a light source most familiar to everyone. It's 93 million miles away, and it's the sun. Here are a few tips when shooting outside when the sun is your main light source. Avoid shooting when the sun is directly above you. It creates really harsh shadows, blown out highlights, and oversaturated colors. This won't help your cool car photo cause. Clouds help you out because they act as natural diffusers, meaning they spread the light out. It takes harsh direct light and smooths it out like butter. If you can't avoid shooting in bright sunlight, find a spot in the shade. The shade will help light the car evenly, meaning there aren't spots that are under or overexposed. Underexposed means an area in the picture that is too dark, and overexposed is the opposite, it's too bright. Another quick tip is that even in the shade, there will be a main direction of light, and generally, you'll want to shoot from the position where the light is behind you. All right, I think we're ready to take some pictures. These kind of suck. Luckily, I work in automotive media, which means I have access to other people in automotive media. And his name is Larry Chen. All right, if you don't know, Larry Chen is basically the best car photographer ever, okay? He shot for Hot Rod Magazine, uh, Speed Hunters, Super Street, literally everybody. I, I don't know what to say. Do, 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 do. Ooh, Artful, artsy, Art yeah, very artsy. artsy with that one. Oh, the camera operator. That's in there. good too. Yeah, I like that. Eddie. A little, a little foreground subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Far away, you know. Very yeah. artful. Obviously, these are not good. It's not that they're not good. You could still pretty much see kind of what you were going for in terms of the subject. Shooting with a cell phone is one of the toughest things because everything that you shoot is pretty much in focus. So when you park it on a nice hill like this yes. with a nice vista you kind of want to take advantage of the fact that you can actually get the background. When I actually started on Instagram, I told myself I wouldn't post anything other than cell phone photos mm -hmm. until I got to 100,000 followers. Wow. And I kind of wanted to prove that it's so much more about the subject and your composition versus what camera you're actually shooting with. Right off the bat, this is a great location. There's a lot of space here. The best way to get that shot is to move the car closer okay. to the curb, which that way, at a certain angle, you can pretty much get that whole background. Now that the headlights are on, it looks like you actually parked there. Yeah, yeah. Purposefully. Yeah. To take a picture versus it just being a parked car there. Yeah. Whip out your phone. Okay. Just frame out that bench. Okay. All right, so oh. that's that's one of the things for me. So your zooming is this, get this. Yeah. It's walking closer <laughs> okay. or walking backwards. Gotcha. That's your zoom. This is the cheater technique. I don't usually carry a circular polarizer with me. So you kind of just put it in front. Oh, that's sweet. And, okay. All right, so you could turn this. You could see it, it kind of changes the image. Oh. And doc, <laughs> perfect, perfect. Shoot, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get the dog. That's a good shot. Do not be afraid to move the car. Even if it's just two inches here, three inches there. But in terms of rear shots, kind of the trick for me, especially in this kind of light, you gotta have the taillights on. 
that touch of color on a blue car, the front tires kind of disappeared a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So the trick is to actually just turn the wheel all the way to the right. Now this is the quintessential rear three quarter shot. Kind of shows off as much of the car as possible, including the rear of the car and also the side of the car. So let's all right, break out the phones and get some more pictures. For this, let's try to do a vertical and do one that's a little higher. So, so watch your finger. Oh, that's your finger. Is that my finger? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna watch my finger. Teamwork. Teamwork right here. Okay. Dang. Oh, very small car. Yeah. Big guy, small car. So one of the things that we wanna really take advantage of in terms of uh, photography with a cell phone is how small they actually are. But also, it's cool because when you're that close, these cameras are so good, you can actually get macro style shots mm -hmm. where um, it actually produces some natural bokeh or out of focus areas. So the Miata, not the craziest looking engine if I'm being completely honest. Definitely the thing that you want to show on most cars is the valve cover. Also, this is, uh, it, it's kind of like a bright spot. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is whoever's viewing the image are going to kind of get drawn to this. So for me, it's better to kind of frame that out, right? So if you tilt that at a little bit of an angle, you also get to frame out this, right? And then also that. So now what you're shooting mostly is just the valve cover. Larry, thank you so much for coming out. Thanks yeah, thanks so for much. having me. Super awesome. Now let's take those photos and tweak them a little bit. Miata is always the answer. Okay, so now we have some sweet, sweet photos, but good composition is not all you need to make a good photo. You also have to edit it a little bit. And to help me with that, I've got my good friend here, John Cerrone. He likes his fries well done. And he's also a very good photographer and photo editor himself. Cerrone, welcome. Thanks, thanks Nolan. We're gonna use a couple apps today. So let's go ahead and uh, open up Visco. Uh, Visco originally was a film emulator. They have a lot of really cool filters or color grades as you call them and a lot of really neat options you can do in app. Here I know this is a little bit cooler in temperature of a photo so let's add a little bit back of or a little bit warmth back into that so let's go down to the M's Okay, M. and let's try uh, M5 so oh, sweet that already looks looks pretty good looks right a lot better, yeah. <laughs> what's happening here is the highlights are too bright and overpowering so you can actually click on the tones if you slide just a little bit down here Tone. and if you drag the highlight slider what it does is actually recover some of those highlights and make them a little bit dimmer and then something else we might want to play with here is the split toning it's something that i really enjoy to do so that's going to be all the way over at the end but let's bring some cold tones back into the shadows just a little bit so i'm working with a blue now this particular image, I don't think I would want to work too much with the highlights. I actually enjoy this gray tone all the way across. So we're taking the photo from one app. And we're going to go into Lightroom. So let's go ahead and scroll down to Shadows. Okay. And then we can go ahead and drag the slider to the right and it will bring back some ah, of the shadows. Yeah. So I like this at about plus 30 looks pretty good to me. The car looks amazing, but also just having it in the background really makes this photo. So oh, absolutely. How, how do we do that? Let's go one slider above that to highlights. Uh, let's go all the way to 85. So something else we could do, we could try bumping the contrast. Here I like uh, about, let's do 25. You can also try sliding the white slider down and it'll give you just a little bit more of that skyline in the background as well. I like that at, at minus 30. So I think this is about as good as we could get with adjusting yeah. light on the free end of Lightroom. Sarone, thank you very much for Always. helping me out. I honestly want you to take the knowledge that we've given you here and get out there and take some really good car photos. Um, and maybe you'll be like Larry Chen or John Sarone here in no time soon. Or you'll be like Nolan. Or you'll be like me. With all these tips, I went from taking pictures like this a few weeks ago to taking pictures like this. So get out there and start taking some pictures. If you post them on Instagram, please tag me at Nolan J Sykes. Use hashtag Donut Media. Use hashtag Nolan J Sucks because I sucked at taking photos. It's kind of funny. Since we shot with them, I've been taking pictures every day of my car and just other cars I find. I, no joke, spend at least like half an hour every night now just processing old photos. It's super fun. Turns out if you practice, you get better. If you want to see more of Larry Chen's work, you could follow him on Instagram at Larry Chen and watch his stuff on Hoonigan Autofocus. There's a ton of videos about all of his shoots. It's really awesome. 
A lot of cool insider knowledge from him. Just thank you again, Larry. Appreciate it so much. And thank you to my good friend, John Cerrone. You can follow him at Cerrone Photo and follow 992 as well. Uh, watch this episode of Up to Speed. Watch the 100th episode of Up to Speed right here. It's super awesome. James cries. And then watch, check out last week's episode of Wheelhouse right here. All right, be nice. See you next time.